Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to tonight's AACPG broadcast. Um, that's the American African American Community Partnership Group of Lake County. My name is Margie Taylor, and I will be your host for this event, Aging Well. And it is brought to you by the AACPG of Lake County, and we want to thank you for joining us tonight. We ask that you would invite your friends and family, just hit that like button and comment and share through the broadcast. The mission of the African American Community Partnership Group collectively works to eradicate disparities among the underserved African American Lake County residents through advocacy, education, and social justice. And tonight we are gonna do just that. We have a wonderful panel of seniors tonight who is going to be um, sharing their thoughts and their tips and trips, tips and tricks for aging well, trying to say that 10 times. And um, but, so I'm going to introduce these panel for you right now. First, we have Miss Jimmy Luster, a retired teacher and social worker for over 40 years in Lake County, Illinois. She's coming to us all the way from Hot Springs, Arkansas. She is a mother of six, a loving grandmother and great grandmother. In her spare time, she loves to travel. She has traveled to Europe, Spain, Brazil, the Caribbean, and Cuba. She also loves volunteering in literacy programs and children's ministry. Her motto is, take care of mind, body, and spirit. Welcome, Ms. Lester. Hello. We also, we also have with us Ms. Frances B. Willis. She was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. She was the first African-American to graduate from Charity Hospital of Nursing in New Orleans in the mid 1960s as a registered nurse. She received her BSN, that's the Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Dillard University in New Orleans, Louisiana. She has worked as a licensed registered nurse for over 50 years in various healthcare facilities, which includes hospitals, clinics, and schools. Her last place of service was the Cancer Treatment Center in Zion, Illinois, where she served 25 years until her retirement at age 70 and a half years young. Welcome, Ms. Willis, to tonight's program. Thank you. We also have Mr. Ronald Curtis Grace, born and reared in Chicago South Side and moved to Lake County in 1971 and is currently residing in Lindenhurst. He pursued a supply chain that spanned more than 40 years. Upon retirement in 2018, he founded a consulting business upon the request of a former international supplier. He is a member of the Shiloh Baptist Church of Waukegan, where he has taught adult Sunday school since 2003. As of February 2020, Mr. Carter, Mr. Grace has hosted the um, Ear Candy Emporium, music show, and co-host a talk show w on WRLR 98.3 FM. Wow. Welcome, welcome, welcome panel. Thank How you. How's everyone Thank doing you. tonight? Fantastic. Good. Good. So we're here to give some tips and tricks to our audience about aging well. We know lots of people will talk about um, wealth. But I say my model is, is that health is well, because you can have all the money and things in the world, but if you don't have good health, it's really hard to enjoy those things. So we're just going to want you to share with us. We're going to start with you, Ms. Willis. How would you say, give us some tips and trips, tips and tricks for aging well. I'm not going to be able to say that well tonight, am I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, um, well, I, I find joy in living first of all, and that's important. And I do, uh, I have four children and six grandchildren. And I uh, also have uh, joy in the fact that I was able to uh, make sure that they all got a college education and beyond. I uh, enjoy my kids when they, my, when they come over and especially the grandkids. And with COVID that was kind of a, a by myself time for a while because I used to pick up the kids from school and bring them here until the parents got off from work and then take them. And uh, my daughter always says being with them keeps me young. So, uh, and also uh, 
one of the things, you know, for instance, uh, you mentioned health. Health is very important and mental health and physical health. And many times uh, I will walk in my subdivision for a mile and a half, probably three times a week. If the weather's bad, I'll do something inside. And that in itself keeps me, keeps me going. And also it's a matter of, uh, of what you eat and uh, sleep. Everybody needs a certain amount of sleep. And uh, I, uh, as older adults, many times we wake up during the night you know, to uh, maybe go to the bathroom, but that's, that's a good thing. Your kidney is still functioning. Um, we need to keep our muscles uh, intact because if you don't use the muscles, then you lose them. And uh, then you find out, you know, things are not as they were before. For instance, I've had uh, a shattered kneecap and I find if I don't exercise, then it gets stiff and I have a problem, you know, getting up and walking and whatever. Whereas if I walk and exercise it, then it feels much, much, much better. Very good, thank you. Miss, Miss Luster, how about you? What tips you have for our seniors today? Um, my tip is, um, the biggest one is live each day and do what you need to do as if it's your very last day. Don't, um, be uh, thinking what I should have, could have. So I'm very adventurous um, to a fault, I think. Um, I think I, I, I'm a pancreatic cancer survivor of 12 years. And a lot of people don't know, even Miss Gail, I was telling her I was working for her and I'm legally blind in uh, my left eye and I drive all over everywhere, even mm -hmm. driven to New Orleans. So I don't let um, my barriers set me back. I, I do a lot of uh, mental and physical kinds of things. I'm up and at it, out the door, uh, whether I'm thrifting, talking to people. I just always try to find something to do to keep myself busy. But it's important that I relax the mind a lot. So I do a lot of meditating. And I just heard the other speaker said, uh, my little great-grandson, is here in High Springs. Matter of fact, I have him in the other room. I tell him, please do not come out. But uh, <laughs> he's three, uh, going on four. Uh, he'll be four next month. And we just came from outside at my apartment. There is a little, uh, like a little lake there. And um, we do a lot of little science talks and talk about different little things and take pictures. So I just did a spring thing with him a few minutes ago. Uh, I love to travel. Uh, the virus have kept me um, from doing what I need to do, including coming to Lake County. Mm -hmm. um, my last trip was to Cuba um, right before the virus. One of the things I, I really, um, I was sitting up thinking about, I was moving here and I really wished I had done some more aggressive things prior to the virus, if you know what I mean. Because uh, I put a trip on hold. Uh, I like to do little close trips too, like going to different little places. And yes, I will drive on the bad eye. <laughs> you know? um, I like reading. Um, I'm an avid reader um, and a nosy reader. Uh, being a teacher, I used to have to read a lot of things that work with the students and working at the college. But now I, I like um, reading some of my old books. Maya Angelou is one of my favorite. Um, so Great. And, um, nice. the last thing I'm going to say is I'm very holistic. Um, even though I take my medication, do what I need to do, but I was raised by an old grandma. So Right before the virus, I was already doing the elderberry, um, the elderberry uh, tea gummies. Um, I always make concoction up um, turmeric tea, and that's how I, I, I was listening to her talking about your agility and what have you. I do mind enhancer kinds of things. Um, so, oh, I. 
Yeah. 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 I'll fix something up real quick and get people. Oh, I said, but don't be going out telling people this because they'll think I'm kind of weird up in here. <laughs> and the last thing I, is prayer. Um, because I realized on any given day, I tell anybody that's a uh, senior, I have a husband that he is uh, both legs is off and uh, he'll sit up and feel sorry for himself. Mm. So I don't let people, even my husband, give me a pity parlor. I right there, spiritual uh, people. And that's what keeps me going is when I see other people happy. Very good. How about you, Mr. Grace? What 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 can you do for us tonight? And tell us why you're why you're on the banks of Hawaii there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just turned 72 last Monday. And I also got my second vaccine shot last Monday. And one of the things I was surprised by is that everybody told me, well, with the first one, your arm's going to be sore. And with the second one, you're going to feel like you got the flu and fever and aches. And I'm here to tell you, praise God, I felt nothing. Wonderful. Um, I think one of the things we need to understand is that statistics say that on average, we're going to spend 20 years in retirement. Now, your money needs to last. Yes. And health and well being is number one. Now, just like Ms. Lester, I'm an avid reader as well. And once I retired three years ago, I love reading, I love gaining knowledge, I love projects. And I thought, mm -hmm. what better subject to study and try and master than my own uh, health and well being? Yes, right. You know, as I started approaching uh, retirement, I looked at some of my habits and knew that things had to change. So New Year's Eve 2009 was the last time I had a puff of a cigarette. Oh, praise yeah. God. Good. Praise God. February of 2012 is the last time I ate meat. And that, that, that's a long story as to how that happened, but. <laughs> You're a brave individual. <laughs> um, I think you just need to have a positive outlook on aging, number one. And particularly with everything that's going on in our country and in the world today, with what I see with our children and grandchildren having to deal with, I tell people all the time, I'm glad I'm old. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be a millennial today. That's, that's just me. Um, and like Sister Willis said, you know, I, I'm careful about what I eat. Every morning, I'm at the Lindenhurst Park District Gym, and I do 45 minutes of cardio and 15 minutes of weights. I do that every day for an hour to an hour and a half, Monday through Thursday. Praise God, I'm not on any medications and never have been. Mm. And I like to keep it that way for as long as I can. And what uh, Sister Luster said about maintaining your mental acuity. Yes. Reading my consulting business, uh, I deal with the company from which I retired and handle a sales account there. Mm -hmm. So it keeps my mind engaged in the engineering and the science there. I love crossword puzzles and logic puzzles and watching Jeopardy because you need to exercise the mind, you need to exercise mm -hmm. the body, and with the prayer, you need to exercise the spirit. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And one thing I do every day is I take time out some point in the day to dance. <laughs> All right. I might be in the middle of the supermarket but I'm going to dance. I can be in line at the credit union. I'm going to dance, even if it's just a little soft shoe. And I think every day, if you do that, I'll tell you another trick I did for me. I was concerned about, as we age, Alzheimer's or dementia. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't know, does it sneak up on you or does it hit you all at once? 
And I said, I need to come up with a mental memory exercise that I do without fail every day. And hopefully, if I ever begin to struggle with that, recalling it, then I might have the wherewithal to call my doctor and say something's wrong. Right. So what mm -hmm. I decided on is before I allow my feet to hit the floor every morning, I recite the books of the Bible. Yes. Very good. Yeah. I've been Very doing good. Every day for about nine years now. Amen. That's a wonderful tip that you that you do. Um, it's called mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And some people call it meditation, but that is actually a wonderful way to start. So you keep your mind and mentally keep yourself mentally strong. This pandemic has <laughs> um, had an effect um, on everybody from children. And I can imagine most of our seniors who are isolated and have you know, not been able to see family and friends and it can really play on, on, on the mental. Ms. Willis, tell me some of the things that you've been doing. What's been bringing you the greatest joy um, during this pandemic to keep yourself uh, mentally strong? Well, first I would mention the fact that uh, before the pandemic, I would I belong to several organizations, uh, the Church Women's Club, uh, Church Women United, which is a program that has different denomination of uh, of women. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> and and there were like three or four different organizations I belonged to in which I held an office in. And I was always going, going, and my kids were happy. You know, mom, I'm glad that you're always doing something. Then when COVID came, it's like everything came to a halt. So mm -hmm. what I did, what I do is that I do talk to and uh, FaceTime with uh, my uh, grandkids and with my um, my children. And I have uh, one child that's in Portland, Maine, and. Uh, especially, you know, there, I, I can't see her, so I can go ahead and do this. And during COVID also, before we could get together, my daughter would come from Chicago to here, and my son would come from uh, Kenosha with his kids. And mm -hmm. for Mother's Day, for instance, last year, uh, my daughter stopped and got some food from Red Lobster, she brought it, and then we uh, sat outside a distance apart. It happened to be a nice day, which is good. And we set a distance apart and we actually, you know, ate then. Uh, so I try to keep in touch with everyone. I uh, have phone calls to the people that are on the, um, in the organization I've been in just to keep in touch. And so by doing that, and, and uh, I do watch TV. I watch the, you know, I, uh, I watch the judge shows and I watch the, the suspense shows. And I like those because it keeps you guessing as to who did it. So, <laughs> oh yeah. So, so I'll do that, and I do play games on my um, on my phone. And uh, there are certain ones that are educational games on the phone. So I try to play those uh, most of the time. And um, basically, like I said, with the exercise and with the food, one thing we we mentioned food uh, earlier. And I'm not going to say I don't eat meat because I do eat meat. <laughs> but, but anyway, we always have to mention, mention our greens and, you know, vegetables mm -hmm. and fruits and stuff. Those are important. And uh, for instance, I, I just, even since I've been here, I got a text on my phone uh, from someone who said they were in the hospital and they were going in because they had a, a blockage in their intestines and they'd probably be going to surgery. So the point is that for elderly people, especially, you can get constipated, you know, quite easily if you don't have the fruits and vegetable in the water. Mm -hmm. So you need to you need to do that. And the other thing is that when you get the urge to go, if you can go, because the food is in the large intestines, and that's where most of the water is absorbed from it. And if you don't go for like twelve hours, and you've got the urge to go, when you do go, it's going to be harder to go. And the longer you wait, the harder it is. So we have to be, you know, conscious of that stuff. And uh, so basically, I I just try to uh, keep myself busy too. I do read also. Look at my bookshelf and see something I haven't read that's been there. Oh, I'll read this. So yeah. I do that. 
So uh, very good advice. Yeah. Very good advice. Well, I think um, it. I think it, you brought up an important point about particularly your digestive system as it regards our total health. And you're talking about water and fiber. And what many of us don't understand is that when we're fighting off bacteria and viruses, we're told, keep your hands away from your mouth and your nose. However, mm -hmm. anything that invades your body through the mouth or nose goes through your digestive tract, which is where your immune system is attacking whatever's invading. However, if you do, if you're touching and the invasion comes through your eyes, it completely bypasses your digestive system. So you don't, your body doesn't have as good a chance to fight off whatever is attacking you. Very good, very good. I just want to reintroduce the panel. We have Ms. Frances Willis and Mr. Ronald Grace and Ms. Jimmy Lester sharing with us the tips and tricks for aging um, brought to you by the African American Community Partnership Group of Lake County. Ms. Lester, you mentioned um, that you have your grandson or great grandson with you. And yes. um, that's one of the greatest joys you have. Give us some other things that you, um, as you have entered into this part of your life, what gives you the greatest joy? I know, and you did say something about traveling and kind of not putting off the things that you wanna do, right? Right, right. Uh, I do a lot of, one thing I didn't mention, uh, I've been doing, um, before I left Lake County, I was doing a lot of ancestry DNA because mm -hmm. uh, I used to hear my grandmother talk about, um, we had Indian in our blood and, you know, so I just kind of wanted to know where I came from. So what I have done, um, I have been researching, I sent my saliva and found out that I'm, uh, what part of Africa I'm from. I was surprised to find out I was uh, uh, more Nigerian and uh, Cameroon uh, on the maternal side. So I have found, um, relatives in fact um had a definite family but i i have to go to el dorado but there was a young man in manhattan that we figured out that he was my cousin and come to find out when he when i did talk to him he's from hot springs arkansas hmm. when he asked me where i was living uh he's going to come in here for a wedding on Saturday, and I will meet him on Sunday when I come back from the funeral. So I have found uh, relatives using ancestry. So I do a lot of that. Late night, uh, you'll I'll be on there trying to follow leads about my ancestors, being able to trace my heritage back. So of course, you know, I look at finding your roots. I, <laughs> that's a, <laughs> a, a big one for me. So um, I guess those I taught history mm -hmm. social study. I'm a very nosy kind of that's what I meant by nosy kind of reader um, like and then I go online and try to figure out about folks and what makes them tick but I also try to take that knowledge and I'm going to say I was a very shy person coming up um, I had to train myself to talk and since I trained myself to talk through jobs I've had I've never stopped <laughs> so, so um, I, you'll see me on any given day, and I'm going to say this spiritually, um, coming back from uh, when, he, when he just said the mind, body, and spirit, uh, coming back from knowing I was going to live from two months to live to it'll be 12 years uh, in June, June 25th, um, I, God will place me and some of the, like, I'll go out to the store and I'll go someplace and it's somebody I'm supposed to meet. Or somebody's supposed to tell me something, I'm supposed to tell them something. A case in point, uh, the other day I went to a thrift store. I didn't need nothing in there, but I just had this burning desire to go in there. I got in there and somebody, uh, two people was, was doing their favorite verses. And uh, I jumped in. I said, my favorite verse is lean not on your own understanding. I said, I didn't realize what that meant about God directing a path until my mom passed about five years ago. So when I'm feeling some kind of way, I 
try to, uh, you know, like craziness of the world, I think of that. And, you know, so anyway, while I was in there, the young lady that gave the Bible verse, I guess they're, they have, they be in drug programs and different kind of abuse that they've gone through. Um, the one that was giving me the verse, uh, the other lady said she needs somebody to mentor her. She's getting out in June. And I said to myself, how ironic is that my anniversary of the cancer is in June. And here's a person that I gave a number to and uh, she needs somebody to mentor her. Uh, things like that happen to me all the time. It's like I'll be someplace and then when I get back to the house, I'll reflect and I'll say, okay, Lord, that's why you kept me here. So I'm saying all that to say, there's a reason why I didn't die. A lot of people, when I tell them my story, they'll say, that can't be true. You, you still live. Yes, I am. I feel fine. I'm jumping around, hopping around, you know. So um, my testimony, uh, my spirituality, even though I was going to church, doing all the things I supposed to do. But when you know you're in a life or death moment, uh, and you come through something, I, I, what I just heard himself a minute ago, first thing I do when I get up is pray. Thank God that I pinch myself sometimes. Like I'm here another day. I pray myself through it and I get up and go my way. The second thing I do is I don't let people uh, bring me a lot of negative because if you bring me a lot of negative, it's going to uh, consume in my mind. That's my my uh, key to how I deal with uh, things people uh, say to me, and especially in the South, people just like to tell you stories and like, you know, you don't even know the people and they're trying to tell you, you know, all this stuff. So my secret is when they start getting into something that sounds like it's gonna be gossip or it sound like it's gonna be something I don't wanna deal with, I'll say, can I pray with you? Or can we just talk about yeah. this? Yeah. And when I say that, it gets their attention. I mean, I do it with my sister. I do it with everybody because I don't, you know, I like to meet people as I know them. Or if I'm talking to someone, they'll say, well, you know, she used to be strung out on those drugs. And I'm saying like, well, so what? Maybe she's okay now, you know? So I try not to judge other people. Um, yeah. So that's been my secret. I just kind of sit back and watch people. And, you know, I'm Lone Pony down here. I'm not in Lake County where I know everybody. So <laughs> I'm at a disparate, even in my hometown, I felt like I was Lone Pony there, which is why I moved. I said, if I got to be by myself, I might as well, because I had a lot of friends in Lake County. A lot of people knew me down here. Um, you know, nobody cares unless you make yourself visible. I mean, they care, but, you know, so that's what I do. I'm no stranger to anybody. I'll give you my last, you know, if you need it, um, but it's stroking myself. And the last thing I'm gonna say is, I've learned that I have to love myself first. I mean, it's okay to give, but you have to learn to love yourself. Lately, my birthday was February 22nd. People just been, I can't even pay for anything. People been sending me things. And <laughs> one lady went to Africa and she sent me scarf sets and, and I'm like, Lord, am I just, these things just happening because I deserve them and thought I didn't at a time. So I'm learning to love me and then take, uh, give, give that gift forward to people, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. That's it's, very good advice. It's funny and, you say that because when I close my radio show on Friday, my uh -huh. sign off is be well, be safe, be blessed. Be prayerful and love yourself so you can then turn around and love somebody else. Amen. I love that. <laughs> because that is, that is the example is when you're on an airplane and the flight attendant is taking you through the emergency instructions in case the oxygen mask drop with loss of mm -hmm. pressure, what do they tell you? Put yes. yours on first. Yes, yes. yes. Because until you take care of yourself, you're not you in a position to help anybody else. That's the best advice, sir. I, I tell you, and I mean, and it was a work in progress for me. I've been through some stuff, but 
and, and what I'm not going to do is once I learn to love myself is let somebody pull me back away from that. And I think I got wisdom as I got old. I heard you say uh, earlier, sometime I don't want to be the millennial because I was something else. I, if I got, oh Lord, so you know, I, I am at my best wisdom right now, you know. Yeah, um, Miss Willis, what would you, that's, you know, they share some things of what they would do differently. Um, you know, as you look back over your life, um, you can see your growth or you ought to be able to see your growth. And there's yeah. some things that you um, don't want to invade your space. Not that you're, um, you just know better, you do better. So Amen. what advice would you give people as they're entering their golden years, Miss Willis? Okay, well, one of the things uh, I would say, like they were saying, take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself. Even during the COVID time, you know, people were afraid to go to the doctor because they might get contaminated in the office of the other mm -hmm. people. Uh, the immunization for children and all, those should definitely follow through because if not, then you're complicating everything and yeah. you're putting your children and yourself at risk. At risk. Um, as far as uh, things that I like to do now, for instance, I like to be outside. And on mm -hmm. any given day, if it's nice outside, I want to be outside. Mm -hmm. I have flower gardens, uh, quite a few of them, and I have an, an up, above the ground vegetable garden. So mm -hmm. those are things that I do to try to keep myself busy. Um, I do uh, this because of COVID, I have not been able to travel any place, but I usually take at least one or two trips a year. Mm -hmm. And I've been, my first trip was to Hawaii and uh, my daughter talked me into going there and I kept saying, no, I can't. The kids have to, I have three boys also. They have to go through college, I can't do it. But anyway, she decided, okay, mom, uh, here's what we'll do. But anyway, we went to Hawaii and since then I've been to, uh, to I've been to, to Spain, I've been on several cruises, I've been to Germany, I've mm -hmm. even been to Russia. I wouldn't go to okay. Russia now, <laughs> but I did go, but I did go to Russia back then, and it was an interesting experience. Um, so as far as, as changing things, it's just a matter of, I, I, I it took me a while, but I did keep my dental appointments, and I did keep my, um, my physical appointment with the doctor. Uh, with the blood test, my annual appointment. So I think everybody should uh, think about that and should, you know, do this. And uh, once you've, uh, well, they talk about COVID vaccine and stuff. And of course that's an individual thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, it's, um, I had both of my, mine too. So I had a friend to tell me the other day, she said, you're almost 80. And I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> and she said, yes, you are. Well, at that time I was 78, soon to make 79. And she says, how much closer can you get to 80? <laughs> well, I don't feel 80. Yeah, you know? man. And I don't feel 79 really, but maybe my hair tells on me. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I, I've tried to make good choices, you know, throughout. Uh, and with the kids, I've tried to make good choices for them. And uh, I'll just love them and care for them and love myself. As you said, you know, you can't, you can't give love unless you have love yourself. Mm -hmm. so and one of our viewers um, commented and says, you cannot pour uh, from an empty cup. So you have to keep yourself filled, mm -hmm. yeah. mind, body, and spirit so that you can feed someone else. Um, and right. we'd, like our, we'd like our viewers to um, if you have any questions for the panel, please feel free to put those um, into the chat and we will ask the panel for you. Mr. Grace, um, you said that you go into the gym and that you exercise. And I know that some um, seniors feel like they cannot do that or it's not safe to do that, but there are many safe ways that they can exercise to stay healthy. Not everybody can go into a gym, but why don't you share some of the other safe ways that they can keep their their body physically healthy? If uh, assuming the weather's nice, you can just go outside for a walk because mm -hmm. research has shown that you get as much physical benefit from a moderately paced walk 
than you do with all these people running and jogging. Uh, if you're bound in the house and as long as your joints are, are allowing you, mm -hmm. you can take a couple of trips up and down the stairs once mm -hmm. an hour or so, even if there's nothing you have to retrieve from upstairs. That's right. Uh, if uh, some are doing fine with low impact exercises just on a stationary bike. And one of the unfortunate things for some, but fortunate for others is throughout this pandemic, that there's a lot of used equipment that people have uh, put up for sale or pawned as the case may be, because we, we talked about mind, we've talked about body, we've talked about spirit, but we also need to talk about finance. Oh yeah, very good. If yeah. on average you live 20 years in retirement, you don't wanna have 19 years worth of money. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I think as people approach their 50s or 60s, at least I know for me, it was time to sit down with my financial planner and kind of readjust my portfolio, my IRA, uh, go from less risk, uh, from more, more risk to a more moderate or more conservative balance in my portfolio. Uh, another thing I did as I approached it was study the heck out of social security and they send you a book every year because there are changes every year. Mm -hmm. So you need to be advised of that. You need to study, uh, study up on Medicare parts A and B, what the Medicare Advantage plans are. Mm -hmm. It was surprising for me to discover that all these various insurance companies selling these Medicare Advantage plans are simply administrators. They don't get to make any decisions. Right. They are administrators on behalf of the federal government. Now, to give you an example, uh, right now, I'm still on my wife's, I have A and B, but at the, toward the end of this year, I will have to settle on an Advantage plan for C and D. Well, D is the prescription drugs. Yes. Now, some plans, the part D is more expensive than others. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't take any medication. So my plan is to get the cheapest one I can find. Now, if I'm on two or three or four medications, that's going to change how I approach that. So I found out that you really need to do your homework. And I think organizations like the AACPG can be a source for people who may have some questions. And there are people who specialize in these kind of plans and would be more than happy to come and talk to any group. That is very, very true. Um, we often um, educate ourselves all of our lives and all of these other aspects, but you know, we sometimes fail to prepare or properly prepare or educate ourselves in our senior years and what we need to do for that. So that you're right, it sounds like another um, program for the AACPG group to bring in for our seniors and maybe not even for the seniors to start it earlier so that um, when you get to that midlife, you can really start to put it into perspective. Nobody, um, people are living um, longer, not necessarily better financially. Well, so absolutely, because one of the scariest statistics and it's current is that 40% of Americans, regardless of age, could not handle a $400 emergency without borrowing or selling something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I look at my, my daughter, she's, she's in her mid-20s, and we've tried to educate her, and I've got to say, in savings and investments, she's got more now than I have when I was 10 years older than she. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... I praise God, we've done our job in trying to educate her in all aspects of navigating this journey. I like what you said too, sir, because uh, you, uh, one of the questions was about what would you have done like five to 10 years prior to where you are now. 
uh, with my health scare uh, at that time, I was like on the top, you know, with, I thought with teaching, never in my dream that I think I was getting ready to, well, actually I was supposed to be dying. So sometimes, like you say, with finances, uh, I had to retire from teaching and I was supposed to have been gone. What I wish I had done, I'm fine because I moved to <laughs> the South, the cost of living is somewhat better, but uh, I'm one of these uh, people that, mm, I would like to live somewhere where it might be a little more expensive. I mean, I'm fine, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, but I was banking on um, another, I was, because I, I don't feel like now, like I'm bored. I, you know, I, I was banking on uh, another 10 or 15 years, even still working now. So you can't take a, a job and think that it's gonna be there forever, even if you're feeling fine. That's right. Mm -hmm. Something like what happened to me can pop up and then you're like, oh my Lord, you know? Mm -hmm. So I advise people, like you said, even if it's younger, if it's 40, 50, uh, look at, look ahead and think about what it's going to be like if your health fail because a lot of young people are, are leaving here especially with the virus Absolutely. and with a lot of other things that's happening so that financial part is a big big piece and when we were all young we thought we were invincible too yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> absolutely yeah well yeah. you know during the pandemic you know we have been in this thing for a whole year plus we are going to be in this some more. We yes. are making strides with the vaccine and everything to um, get better, but we are going to be in this a while. So we, you know, we just have to face that, do what we right. need to do as seniors. We need to do what we need to do to keep ourselves safe, like you said, so we can be prepared to help others and to make them aware that um, if you want to keep living well and aging well, we have to follow the guidelines and, you know, get our vaccination. As Ms. Willis said, keep up with your, with your health because mm -hmm. heart attacks are still happening, you know, um, strokes are still happening. And if you're not getting your annual screenings in a timely manner, we're going to, with the pandemic, you may be adding insult to injury. So, um, the, the, the pandemic has kept us all in and have given us time to all reflect on um, our lives and what we would do differently. To age well, moving forward, Ms. Willis, what are you looking for post-pandemic or post-vaccine to, to, what are you looking for forward to in the next year? Well, I love to travel. Like I said, I, I, I used to make at least two trips a year. Um, one in state, you know, in the United States and then one abroad or on a cruise or something. So I'm, I'm looking forward, you know, to doing that. I'm looking forward to be able to travel. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we're making plans this summer to, uh, to do, you know, different things. And uh, to, I, I made a plan reservation to fly to Portland, Maine. So mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, everything is okay and I can. And then uh, I'm looking at the fact that my son and his wife have both gotten their COVID vaccination, both, both of them. And then his in-laws have also gotten theirs. So because of that, I think, you know, of course the kids haven't, but you know, we can still wear a mask, whatever um, right. with that. And so I'm looking forward to having my, having, you know, like, like Mother's Day, rather than have it outside in the yard, sitting six feet apart, not being able to hug anybody, <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, having them come inside and you know, and 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 yes. being able to eat together and touch each other and 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 that type of stuff. Um, I'm just looking forward to basically being with family and and hugs. You know, you you don't think too much of hugs, but you know, you you kind of miss them. Uh, and uh, my, my, one of my little grandson, he would always hug me. And you know how you have the love handle on the side. Mm -hmm. He would always pinch it. <laughs> and I actually, <laughs> I actually missed him pinching it, you know? No. So, you know, it's just, just little things like that. And uh, 
So I'm looking forward to be able to, uh, my son really got the groceries for me for the whole year. And that was Demetrius. Uh, he got the groceries for me uh, for the entire year. And so uh, when I, after I got my second shot, two weeks afterwards, I went to the grocery store and wow, it felt good to be out there. <laughs> you know, it really felt good to be able to, to walk in the grocery store and, you know, I still wore my mask and still stayed away from, you know, people as far as I could. But uh, I'm looking forward to the freedom of being able to to move around without the mask and to do you know different things you know without the mask and uh, hugging the grandkids and and having them over to spend the night and that kind of thing. Mr. Grace, where are you looking to head off to? Well, um, uh, Sister Will has brought up an, an interesting point because uh, scientists and, and medical professionals have discovered that the importance of good social network and interaction. And they say people who have close, tight social uh, interactions and networks have a 50% chance of living longer than those who do not have those kinds of relationships. So certainly post pandemic, my goodness, am I looking forward to being back in our sanctuary on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, we've taken advantage of this technology and still holding Sunday school classes via Zoom, but to be in the sanctuary, to worship together, to pray together, I, I so need to be fed that experience. Mm -hmm. um, be able to go out to Pennsylvania and see my grandchildren out there. I've got grandchildren that are local, but I've got grandchildren in uh, Pennsylvania that I was scheduled to go visit last May. Well, we know what happened to that. Hmm. Uh, it's funny, one of the things I, I do is periodically I'll take my blood pressure. I've got a monitor here and people will say, oh, you got high blood pressure? No. Mm -hmm. you know, I just had my physical, my blood pressure was 120 over 78. Well, well, why do you have a blood pressure monitor? Because I don't want to wait until my physical a year from now and then find out I got a problem. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so I, I try to keep tabs on myself, you know, once every week or every other week, just take it, keep track, plus the, the software program I've got. I can instantly email the results to uh, my doctor. So th there's so many things you can, you can look at to keep yourself well, to keep yourself safe and to keep yourself involved. Um, after this pandemic is over, you know, there's a lot of talk about the new norm. It's probably gonna be the 80-20 rule. It's not gonna be 100% like it was in 2019 or 2018. Mm -hmm. We're, we're never going to be there again. Right. Can we get back to 80% of what we had then? Yeah, I think so. But if nothing else, I think this pandemic has taught us all that regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, mm -hmm. faith, mm -hmm. we are all in the same boat. Right. Yes, and right. we all need each other. Now, we've got a lot of madness going on out there, but I see enough stories and instances of people who are truly coming together and helping one another, whether it's with clothing, with food, with money, whatever the case may be. There's some heavy needs out there. And the other thing I'm looking forward to uh, afterwards is maybe doing some more volunteering. Right, right. right. Yes, I'm you? definitely thinking of volunteering because I, I'll, I just like being around people and doing that kind of thing. And what you said about blood pressure, is, it's pretty good because blood pressure is known as one of the silent killers. Mm -hmm. So you don't know it. And as it gets higher and higher and higher, you may have a headache or something like that. You take a couple of something for your headache. And then before you know it, you're having a stroke or something of that sort. So it's good to monitor your blood pressure. Yeah, but in this um, pandemic, you know, one thing it has taught us though, um, for our seniors, and we may need to get them better connected because 
like you say, it's the 80-20 rule. We're never going to go back 100%. But this has taught us that even in our senior years, we can do this, right? Mm -hmm. We are doing Zoom and we are doing Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. We can do that. So, and I've seen families come together and, you know, where they may have not taken the time before and taught grandma or grandpa how to do, how to use this technology. You know, God has a way, just my own personal opinion, hope it's not being offensive to anybody, has a way of, of bringing us together one way or another. You know, we're so busy in our lives and so separate and we don't have time. Well, now when we can't be together, it's the one thing we long for the most, right? Is right. to be together with each other, family and friends and worship. You know, sometimes on Sunday, we go through the motions up until 2020. And we really see how important that coming together is Again, be, be, be with your family or your friends or in worship service. Um, and, but God has made a way for that too, but only to make us more appreciative of the thing. So these are the things we'll be able to share with our grandkids and be able to say to them and our, our children, you know, look at what the pandemic has taught you. And as you enter your senior years, my tips would be to you to appreciate family a little bit more cherish those friendships, cherish those times together because there may be a time when they cannot. So, you know, but we, we thank God for taking technology. We have to be thankful for all things, you know. Amen. And so, yeah, we have taken some virtual vacations. They had some virtual vacations on there. I went to places oh, yeah. that I probably would never see because I don't fly. <laughs> so, uh, come here with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving your Hawaiian vacation you got going on over there, Mr. Grace. <laughs> well, you know, you, you talked about sharing with the kids, but I think another thing that's happened through this pandemic is I've watched those of us who've had to learn technology, being able to help other of us who are not particularly tech savvy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to give you an example, and I love projects anyway. A couple of years ago, um, instead of sending Christmas cards to my family, I wanted to do a coloring book from Family oh. Focus. Oh. Went online and checked some companies that do this. I didn't like their product. And I said, well, oh. I don't know anything about it, but I got to be able to do better than this. So I researched, I read books, found some software programs that were free. I put together a 20 page five by seven coloring book made of family photos covered wow. all the siblings, their children and the grandchildren. And the whole thing only cost me two and a quarter per book. Wow. Now I've got a new skill. <laughs> I like that because uh, what I'm doing, I was talking about the, um, the DNA and doing uh, my ancestry. Uh, at my sixth and sixth birthday, I wrote a sketch of my life. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to do like they did in the Bible with this research I have with how far my I go back in my family lineage. I'm going to start it off letting the kids know uh, who's who on each side that I've researched. And then I'm telling little chunks of my life. And the good thing about it is that when I first start writing a bird's eye view of it, I hadn't came to Arkansas, so I feel like I have fulfilled now and know how it end up. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is that's going to be something for my children to read. So I like to get those ideas from you because I'm going to, um, so what I do a lot of time now, I sit down and I finish filling in the book that I'm leaving for, uh, for my kids to read some interesting stories of, you know, that has gone on. So I do that. Um, I'll just sit down and just write chapters um, of my life. It's already finished, but I'm going back in putting fine tuning little parts for them to read. So I decided, well, I just won't wait until I die. I'll just go ahead and write this thing. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and it to them. Now I got plenty mm -hmm. of time, right? Because the, pan the pandemic has happened and so many of us have put off things. But there's yeah. a, there's a, there's a 500,000 plus people who didn't get this chance to get right. to where we are. And so there's no right. putting off, you know, my, I, me and my daughter, 
um, laugh one time. We'd always save, save our crab for a special occasion. Now we eat crab Monday through Friday if we want to eat crab right. any time of the week. Well, I want to first of all thank the African American um, Community Partnership for asking me to host it. I've had a wonderful time. Again, mm -hmm. our panel was Ms. Francis Willis, uh, Mr. Ron Grace, and Mrs. Jimmy Luster. We have, um, we're just about, our program is just about over. And, um, but I thank you all for talking with me tonight and talking with our seniors. And I think you've been a big encouragement to them. Um, maybe somebody on our panel that, you know, heard your story, Ms. L Ms. Luster, about, mm -hmm. you know, you're not supposed to be here, but God, right? Amen. Right? And Mr. Mm -hmm. Grace, how you're living so well um, in your age and you're, you're gonna continue to do that with a positive mind, a positive spirit and your, the, the tips that you gave about simple walking. You don't need to be in a gym. You can just simply walk and get out and free your mind, your body and your spirit. And Ms. Willis and all of you sharing um, God's grace that he has given you in these years as you've moved on. Um, I thank you so much. I thank the AACPG for asking me to host this and our Facebook friends. I hope you enjoyed our program for tonight. You thank all you. have a, a wonderful job. Thank, thank you for inviting us. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, everybody.